you do Ray, mm-hmm. where Jamie won an Oscar. Oh yeah, that Ray. Okay, I thought that you Ray. Ray Donovan. No. Okay. That Ray, uh, which I think is one of the best uh, music biopics ever. Uh, and you do Hustle and Flow, where you played one of the prostitutes. And uh, you know, I just rewatched one of the ro- one of the scenes where uh, you were just running your mouth, uh, you know, and like telling you know telling your pimp that he's your chauffeur and you know that he ain't shit and you know whatever and until he finally just snaps and just throws you out of the house. Um, you know, I, I think that was definitely one of your standout performances. And you know. I, like, you know, people bastardized that character, like even you just said you were just running your mouth. And I don't think people understood that from her perspective, she signed up to get pimped. She signed up to be taken care of. She signed up for someone to be there to make sure that she was safe in a job that she didn't want, Mm -hmm. but she took to help him yeah. follow a dream that she didn't see but had been patient dealing with for a very long time. Not to mention, she'd allowed other women to come into the fold, you know, without tripping on that either. So when MTV wanted to give me the villain of the year um, thingy thingy, I was like, no, I don't, I don't want to villainize her. And I know you just looked at me like I'm crazy. And well, no, because you know, I never thought of her as a villain. I didn't either, yeah. you know. But if I had, maybe more people, you know. So it's so hard trying to do the right thing because that's a, a missed opportunity that I could have been on an MTV stage honoring a black character, despite what you think of her. But to villainize this woman to me at the time, I thought was quite unfair. I thought to call her a villain simply because she was standing up for what she thought was right was unfair when the villain is the guy who dug in the toilet and killed somebody and ended up in jail at the end. You know, but he's the, the, you know, the the anti-hero and she's, how does she become the villain? You know, and I thought I was only in the movie <laughs> the first half. How, how, how are you going to have a villain in the first half and then, you know, no more villain? I mean, so I thought it was um, villainizing women as well, you know, hmm. to say that me jumping ship was the ultimate, you know, uh, betrayal and reason why he didn't get his record deal. Maybe because you dug in the toilet and killed somebody you didn't get a record deal. That's all I'm saying. You had Isaac Hayes right there. Why you didn't get a record deal then? <laughs> so, you know, and then knowing, you know, I'm just being flippant and silly. But, you know, knowing the history of the, the real characters and the fact that, you know, the original script had, you know, DJ Terrence's character come back to me. You know, hmm. and it, a lot of drama happened and, <clears throat> and myself and Craig created something that I thought was great. And I gave a whole badass monologue, titties out. And I did it as an homage to the Mac. One of my favorite scenes is when he first comes back and He's in the bed with that chocolate girl, and I, I don't know the, um, her name, and I, and I feel terrible about that. It would be nice if somebody looked it up. But anyway, <clears throat> he, she gives this badass monologue, and she's butt-ass naked. And just to be that free as an actress and to be able to express, and that's what I did. And when John came back and saw it as the executive producer, um, he didn't like it. He didn't like, you know, and it's... I love my mentors, John, Spike, and sometimes they love me too hard because they judge so harshly. You know, it was, you know, I love John. I I really do. John um, Singleton. Yeah. And um, so he, he didn't want me to do a monologue with my titties out. So oddly enough, all the footage got stolen. 
um, the truck that was um, hit carried the footage of that day. Huh. So that's why you you didn't get to see that scene, and John didn't want to reshoot it. He didn't he didn't he didn't want it to go into that direction because in real life, of course, Craig married his wife, and my character was you know. Well, yeah, I mean, I've interviewed actual pimps, right? You know, from Don Magic Wand to Fillmore Slim, and Don Magic Wand would have never thrown me out like that, <laughs> right? And you know, I think. You know, when I when I watch that scene from the perspective of, you know, talking to, to pimps and understanding the relationship between the pimp and the prostitute, you know, like, you know, what I think a lot of people don't realize, because you were like, you know, you know, get angry, you know, hit me, do something, because it seemed like you were seeking an emotional connection and, you know, from talking to the Don Magic Wands, you know, they explained how a pimp and a prostitute is really a relationship, is really like a man and wife. I think a lot of people don't realize is that when it comes to, to the pimp and the hoe, it's not a standard job arrangement. It's actually a relationship. It's definitely a relationship. Yeah. I mean, it's husband and wife. And the bond is even stronger than that because you don't know many wives that'll go out and work for their husband and let the husband stay at home and bring the cat. So the bond is so much stronger. It's so much realer. It's so much life into it because of the excitement. And I mean, when you got that platform and the prostitute can stand up next to a man and know her man is number one and she getting the cheer, she feel that. That's the drive that make her want to go out and get a man some money to continue to keep him number one. And I was the bottom. Yeah. You know, and 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 that's even a deeper emotional connection. Yeah. Because I'm the one who brings, you know, the other girls or whatever. Yeah. In. Yeah. So it 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 was that is exactly what it was about. It was about this woman wanting him to do what other pimps do when when you talk slick when you jump ship show me that you're still my pimp yeah you know show me that you're still my man because right now i'm feeling like you you want to be a rapper <laughs> and that wasn't the plan <laughs>